Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. We're in a bit of a different venue this time because what I'm going to show you is too big for my workbench. Um, it's June. June in the middle of the month is my birthday and there's a long-standing tradition in our household that my lovely wife Linda buys me a firearm for my birthday. And this year it's this. This is a Mauser made by, well, customized by Emil Kerning and Son of Seoul, Germany. And it is a Mannlicher style stock. And it is a beautiful rifle, very well detailed and surprisingly light at six pounds, 11 ounces. It has a number of very wonderful details and is a delight to shoot, although I haven't gotten it to a proper rifle range yet. But I have fired it, as you can see in the video. And this was made in caliber 300 Savage, as near as I can determine in the 1930s. And it is not a sporterized or converted military rifle. This is a civilian rifle with a Mauser medium length action. And a lot of, as I said, really fascinating details. Now, Emil Kerner and Son was a uh, gunsmithing firm in Seoul, West Germany that I have been able to find surprisingly in little information about, but they were well known for their drillings and shotguns, and as well as making Mauser sporting rifles and over and under express rifles. And uh, they seem to have been very well regarded and looking at the craftsmanship of this piece, it's very easy to understand why. Let's have some close-ups. A couple of the first things that stand out are the butter knife bolt handle, which as you can see, lies very, very close to the stock of the gun. And this is both kind of nice when you're hunting or carrying it, but it's also, if you are in practice, which I am not, very, very fast. So, when you fire the gun, it's a very short shift to work the bolt and get back on the trigger. So as I say, with practice, you can get very, very fast with this. Uh, another thing that stands out are the double set triggers, which it has been brought to my attention that people these days seem to be unfamiliar with. So. The way it works is like a double single action on a revolver, sort of. If you simply pull the trigger, it's a pretty standard Mauser trigger, maybe a little on the heavy side. Very nice, smooth and crisp, but not light. However, if you pull the back trigger all the way to the rear, you'll hear a little click. And then... The front trigger, if you touch it, goes off. Um, this is actually too light for my Lyman trigger gauge to measure. But the idea is that in an emergency or in a quick situation, you can simply pull the trigger. If you have time and need greater precision, you can set the trigger and then have a hair trigger, which is a very nice feature. Uh, the safety in this operates in typical Mauser fashion. If the gun is cocked, which it cocks 
when the bolt handle is raised, that cams the firing pin back, you simply flip this up. And this is nice because you're not going to forget your safety zone if you go to aim when hunting or such. As a very positive action. What you do not want to do is hold the trigger back while you flip the safety off because it will just drop the firing pin as if you've fired the rifle with the trigger. As you can see, there's some nice hand cut checkering on both sides of the bolt face. There is tasteful engraving on practically every place where it's reasonable to put it, including all of the screw heads on the gun and um, the trigger guard. It also has, among other very cool features, it has an octagonal tapered barrel with a full length sight rib, which is really just quite extraordinary craftsmanship. Very beautiful. And serrations on the top of the sight rib to reduce glare. And you can see you have an express style rear sight, which close range, this sight, flip this up for longer range shots. The front sight is a tiny gold bead. Let's see if I can get that in there. And this is actually a gold bead, not brass. It has the Manlicker style forend, but it is not a one piece full length stock. And I have had people call this a duffel cut because GIs returning from World War II would cut the stock around here so that when the rifle's taken apart, it would fit in a standard GI duffel bag. This is not a duffel cut. This is something that Emil Kerner seems to have done quite regularly. And I have seen it on rifles that were offered for sale that never left Europe. So it is not a duffel cut. The standard stock has been augmented with a beautifully inset cheek piece, which is very comfortable. And there is very nice, very precise hand cut checkering on the grip and a horn butt cap on the grip. And as I said, the rifle weighs six pounds, 11 ounces and balances perfectly right here. And uh, it's just a very nice handling rifle. Quite delightful. Um, for markings, you have this here, which appears to be upside down, but no, that's meant so you can read all the information from the same side of the rifle. And that indicates, of course, Emil Kerner Usson. And on this side, it is rather crudely stamped. <laughs> 300 Savage, and the proof marks are not fully visible because they're partially under the stock. And here, I don't know if you can read this, but it says Krupp Stahl, meaning Krupp Steel or Fluid Steel, which is, um, which was, you know, the premium stuff at the time. And um, it's just a gorgeous rifle. It's in very, very fine condition. And um, shooting it is quite delightful. I'm going to have to get it to a proper rifle range and try it out at range, but I have very little doubt that <laughs> I have very little doubt that the rifle is more accurate than I can shoot it. And uh, it's just modern rifles, modern handguns like Glocks and CZs, uh, CZ polymer frame guns, and you know Winchester and Remington rifles with the polymer stocks. Those, those are fine appliances and they're very suited to task and very good at their job. This, this is a tactile and visual delight. It's the difference between running errands in a minivan and running errands in an Alfa Romeo Spider. Um, <laughs> one of them's a chore, the other one is a celebration. And um, I'm very pleased, very pleased to have found this especially at an affordable price, so I did have to sell a gun to buy it. Totally worth it. It also has a uh, old school style European front sling swivel and a standard black back swing swivel, sling swivel. Wow, rended lips. Um, and just 
you really have to handle a gun like this to fully experience it because it is just it's an experience in and of itself just just to handle it and look at it and uh, with a 20 inch barrel this would have been considered at the time a carbine actually <laughs> um, but by today's standards it is a full-length rifle and just everything about it, it just comes right up naturally. It's as if this rifle were made for me, which it wasn't. And the true art, the true hallmark of mastery of this rifle is that everyone who's handled it feels like it was made for them. <laughs> That's not easy to do. And uh, sit back a little bit and relax. Um, the rationale for this is I like to hunt and this is a terrific rifle for any venue I'm likely to hunt in now specifically I had in mind for this um, Eastern Washington uh, mule deer which I very much hope to get organized with some friends and go hunt this year and 300 Savage it's not a cartridge it's actually the parent case of 308 Winchester or 762 by 51 NATO and is um, somewhat less powerful and with a 150 grain bullet it makes maybe a hundred foot pounds of energy less 120 foot pounds of energy less but it's a um, it's a good utility cartridge which is why it was so popular for so many decades and in later years it was eclipsed by the 308 Winchester it doesn't make it less of a good cartridge and I'm quite confident that with the iron sights, I could reach out pretty easily to 150 yards, which is sort of the maximum I want to shoot a mule deer at. They're huge and heavy, and frankly, I don't want to carry one any farther than I have to. Um, but yeah, it's just, a, as I say, a visual and tactile delight with details that you just don't get on modern production rifles. Now, this was an expensive rifle in the 1930s and probably cost between one and three months of wages for a typical middle-class worker. Uh, these, uh, you do come across these occasionally here in the United States. Uh, they're relatively rare in the United States and they seem to sell typically between $500 and $2,400 depending on the phase of the moon, what, which, you know, rituals you've performed or whatever. I have no idea. Um, but this one was quite inexpensive as such things go, and I was delighted that I could obtain it. Now in Europe, where there are more of these, um, they seem to sell, based on auction results from the last few years, for 1,000 to 3,000 euros. So if you can find one at a decent price, I'd hardly recommend it. This is a beautiful, beautiful rifle. And, you know, very often when I buy a firearm, it's to make it into what I want. I'm not changing a thing. This is just, for me perfect exactly as it is and I couldn't be happier thank you very much Linda you are the light and love of my life and not just because you buy me guns anyway um, thanks very much to my patreon supporters you really help more than you know all of this costs money ammunition for this is $50 a box of 20 Yes, I am getting reloading dies, and I'm going to reload for this. Absolutely. Um, it all costs money, and your contributions help more than you know. If you would like to join my supporters on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. So, I'd also like to thank our channel benefactors. Our, this is like the royal we, I guess. I'd like to thank my channel benefactors, who have helped with contributions of ammo, allowing me to show you and to talk about their guns, and in any number of really wonderful ways. So, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.